of this video topic is biographies and specifically casting Liesl Jones. So that's a kind of in thinking about and talking through the film adaptations of the books that I am trying to write and adapting them into movies. The I came up with a dream list for each of the biographies, then I dropped a biography and I added a biography, and the biography, so with two E's, like the person I'm writing about, um, Liesl Jones, I added her, and so I need a new dream pick for who I would cast to play Liesl Jones. So one of the first things, I don't, I don't know, I've been dreaming of writing her biography specifically for over 20 years. <laughs> um, and then the film adaptations, well, there were a bunch of biopics growing up, like Walk the Line and Ray and stuff like that, that were really huge movies. Um, and so it's kind of like, how does one cast somebody to play another person? And what if the person really wants to play themselves? So should I cast Liesl Jones as Liesl Jones? Um, kind of thing. That's kind of like, oh, it, it thus far has kind of been my starting point for each person is like, and then perhaps like no because a film is a different thing and it's good to differentiate film versus a person's life um or videos versus a person's life movies versus a person's life which is different than a book because the bo movies themselves um as talked through with the publishers are film adaptations of the book and having a biographer in a biography as in a book about the biography the person um, it adds an extra la layer of security for the person being written about because I have rights to the person's life for my book but then if somebody wants to make a movie based on the book they have to get my permission um, they, they have to get my rights um, and of course there's violations of rights all the time it's really common in sports like pool swimming where um, a ghostwriter will write a book about a person and then claim it's an autobiography so can I list an example? Yeah, Adam Peaty didn't actually write an autobiography. Somebody wrote it for him and then they like sold it as an autobiography, which is really common. Uh, it's really co the field it's most common in is politics. Um, so that's a unoriginal aspect of politics <laughs> seeping into pool swimming. Uh, it's not the most original of sports. Um, but so I'm actually writing a book about a person and got their consent and that kind of stuff. So how do I cast Liesl Jones? Um, well, that's kind of explaining some of the, well, got to be careful about the predator and the liar um, kind of types that like to write false autobiographies, uh, pretend to be someone they're not with their writing. Um, and that can happen in movie form too. So how do we protect ourselves from those kind of uh, villains? Um, which is very appropriate word for that kind of press. Um, yeah, especially American-based swimming press and United Kingdom-based swimming press. Specifically, England tends to be the problem and Australia-based swimming press and coverage of swimming. And that's very relevant, the level of um, tabloid status of the Australian and American and English press for Liesl Jones, who was a breaststroker and kind of everybody retaliated her against her at the time and especially now after the fact. So how do I keep her safe? And I was like, well, she lived it. She's a fighter. That's like who she is, her. Um, and her times reflect that. Some people are fast because they target other people's times. That's pretty common in American swimming. Um, it, it, Lydia Jacoby is an exception to that. She's an original, but like, um, yeah. Female breaststrokers. Um, and Caitlin Dobler is another good one. Uh, or Dobler, Caitlin Dobler. And so she's a fighter and she's been fighting through her swimming and um, overcoming a bunch of this harassment, discrimination and resistance that the American press, Australian press and English press have been inflicting on her. So it's like, I need an actress. Most important part of this is an actress with the same experience someone who's come overcome great odds um overcome extreme resistance and 
is fight, has fought for their career in where they are in their life. And there was one person. And um, I can see the Olympic Peninsula from my house, for real. So that is the Olympic Peninsula. That's home to the Olympic Mountains. Uh -huh. And, which is relevant because Liesl Jones competed at the Olympic Games, but the Olympic Mountains came before the Olympic Games. So I think, yeah, the names of the Olympic Games were not exactly original. And even for ancient times, mountains and was it Greece were named far in advance. So the names of that games is unoriginal. But on the Olympic Peninsula is a city, city, a town named Forks. And there was a series the twilight series was filmed there and one of the things about living just across the water is i get to hear a bunch of the stuff and we got to hear a bunch of the stuff that kind of went on on the set because we're in the same region i was filming um and i was in like i think it was in high school when those movies started coming out or middle school or something and so i think high school i don't know so point being when filming started or something, so I guess when it was starting to film, um, and filming was done over there, we heard a lot of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes of the movie. And Kristen Stewart has the fighting spirit or a fighting spirit, potentially that's a fit, not comparable, but just a, a fit in the fight, the fighter heart that's required, um, I, I would guess to at least semi-accurately represent Liesl Jones in a movie or a film. So my dream pick for Liesl Jones in a film adaptation of the biography I am working on about Liesl Jones is Kristen Stewart because both have an extreme global scale. They've fought against extreme harassment and discrimination and retaliation and stuff like that, and they're still around. Um, so they're both fighters. Yeah. So that's the dream pick. Kristen Stewart to play Liesl Jones or to depict Liesl Jones.